Hey, what's up? So this is Neil from GrowPotCheaply.com, also PerfectSunLED.com. I'm going to go ahead and go through Chapter 16 of my How to Build a Drip System. And so I already have a video on how to build my drip system, but this is like an easier drip system to build. And it's actually how I use my drip system now with the 50-gallon drum. And I figured I'd go ahead and go through it in the book and show you how you guys how to do it. But let's just go through this chapter. If you guys notice anything like misspelling or anything like that, let me know. I haven't actually gone through and corrected it yet. Also, if you guys enjoy everything I do here, this is the list of things you'll need. I'm not going to read through every one of those because we're going to go through each one of them here, uh, giving pictures of what each one looks like so it's easy to figure them out on Amazon and stuff like that. Oh, so look, at started the training for my mustache. Just It just comes straight out like that, you know, just straight out like this, boom. So that's the training I'm kind of doing. Um, the, that's the Doc Holiday from Tombstone, played by Val Kilmer. So it's kind of doing it already a little bit. But yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's get started on how to build your drip system. It, it should cost you under $300 to do this. There's some things you can do to save some money. Um, like you can buy maybe a cheaper pump. There's actually other brands that are, that, are, that are cheaper that actually do even more gallons per hour. There's one on Amazon. I forgot the name of it right now. But uh, yeah, type in maybe submersible pump and then maybe 1200 or something like that. And it's like $45. This one's like 56 So you can save a little money here and there. Uh, also, by getting a 55-gallon drum at your local store, like at Wilco, that'll save you a lot of money. Because on Amazon, it's a cost like 80, 80 bucks or something. Or even if you buy it from like Walmart or something like that, because of the shipping. So, if you go tired of watering by hand, then you can build a drip system. This is how I water my plants. This is what you'll need. Do -do -do -do. So, first thing, first let's go over where. First, let's go over where you can buy everything you need. Wilco or a hydroponic store should have most things. Wilco sells 55 gallon plastic drums. You can also buy these online. You can get everything at on Amazon. You can buy a 55 gallon water barrel drum on Amazon for $80. Wilco has them for about $40. I think that was about right. You want to make sure you get the kind that don't have the spigot at the bottom, by the way. So get it without the drain on the bottom. So something like this. Uh, they sell them in different colors. You can also get black ones. I think Wilco usually has them in kind of like that color I have. It's kind of like a reddish rush color or something. Uh, there should be a lid on the top here. I think that's what, if this isn't a lid on the top, then you don't want to get this one. I didn't really read through it to see for sure. I just wanted to show kind of what it looked like. Um, yeah, you might have to cut this if that's on a lid, but you definitely want a lid on the top. Echo Plus makes an affordable and reliable submersible pump. You want two of these, the 1056 gallon per hour, or you can get the 13 something. But the 1056 should do 12 plants really easily. It's very powerful. I use a 1200, so I don't use Echo Plus though. I used to, I used it. I found another one that was at a local store that didn't have this one, so. And the 290 gallon per hour. You might be able to get away with using a smaller one, like the 150 or something like that, but I would recommend the 290 to stir it up. The larger pump will feed your plants. The smaller pump is used to keep your water stirred so your nutrients do not settle on the bottom. The smaller pump keeps your water oxygenated. Do not use an air stone because they make your pH unstable and there is plenty of oxygen in the water. Maybe I should say there's plenty of oxygen in the water already. The 1056 on Amazon is $56. And if you can afford it, buy the 1347 gallon per hour for $71. Don't use a smaller pump than 100 or 1000 gallons per hour. The reason why is it has to pump all the way up out of the barrel. And so you gotta make sure you want, you want a, lot of, a lot of force for that. A digital timer that has a second button is really important because we need it, for, we need it to water for five seconds, 10 seconds, or 20 and 30 seconds at a time. These are about $15 on Amazon. Be sure to search digital timer seconds. That's, what I, that's exactly the term I searched to find this. Here's the one is on Amazon right now. I actually bought one of these myself too. So see that second button? That's important. That's what you want. How we can program it to water by seconds. And I'm, I don't explain this in the book. It's all in the thing how to use it. But just in case you guys don't know, um, so you'd set the first, you'd set it to turn on at let's say let's say eight o'clock. So eight zero 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 zero. And then the second time to turn off, you would set it for eight zero zero. And then let's say zero or ten. So that would be that means it's on for ten seconds. Okay. These next parts are the garden tubing and connectors that we need. First, we need some 3 4 inch black tubing. Use black because it blocks UV light so you don't get slime growth on or in your system. 
It needs to be 3 4 inch inside diameter. The outside diameter will be larger depending on how thick the hose material is. This is important. You might be able to buy 15 feet at a grow shop. If not, then buy the following 25 foot Amazon for $30. This is actually um, one of the more expensive things you have to buy because you have to buy it so large. You really probably don't need this much of it. Probably 15 feet would be enough. So, because it needs to come to the pump, out of the out of the tank, back down to the ground, and then split off into two, or just split into one, depends on bigger grow areas. I'm not going to read all this stuff. That just tells you what it is. This is a picture. You will need a 3 4 inch T connector. You only need one of these, which can which you can find at a hydroponic store or at Wilco. If not, you might have to buy a pack of 10 on Amazon for eight dollars, which is kind of a bummer. I couldn't find any 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 of these that were less than a 10 pack on Amazon. You might be able to find them cheaper at another store though, with uh, free shipping or something. I like Amazon because I do Amazon Prime, so I get free shipping and everything. I use it for a lot of stuff. I, f I shop on Amazon like almost every day. It's crazy. Um, you want to make sure though that it looks like this, so that way the outer diameter is going to be able to fit on the proper thing. You can also get the kind where it goes inside. I don't recommend it though. So get this kind. And you can also find these at Home Depot in the garden irrigation system or uh, section. You also need a. You also need two three fourth inch end caps. A five pack on Amazon costs six forty nine. And this is the name. This is exactly what, what it shows up as. And it's a five piece. There's only two of them. Um, I couldn't find anything else on Amazon for the plug. So three fourth, three fourth inch plugs. You can also get the things like looks like two circles like this, and you put the tube through and then bend it, and then that way it kinks the hose at the end. It's for the end of the hose, so it doesn't water doesn't come out. Now we need one fourth inch tubing. I recommend to get. The more flexible kind, it has a texture on the outside. This makes it easier to push in the connectors. Also, to make it easier to push in the connectors, you can dip it in hot water for a little bit and then make you know or heat up with like some sort of blow dryer or something. But usually they're they're easy to get in when you first get it. So this is the name to search. And that's enough for 12 plants, by the way. You only need to cut them into like three foot, three to four foot uh, sections. Now we need L connectors, which is how we will attach the one inch, the one fourth inch tubing to the three fourth inch tubing. But first, we need a one. <coughs> excuse me, we need a one fourth inch hole punch, such as the dig blah blah. blah. This is the name of it on Amazon, two dollars, or you can get spend a little bit more money and get this one here, which has the cutter. Put the tube in there, it cuts it, and then put the tube in here, and it pops a hole in it, which is cool. Let's grab some 1 fourth inch L connectors, also called elbows. If you want to water more than 10 plants, you will need a larger pack of two or two packs of these, because this is a 10 pack that I found on Amazon. This is what they look like. I'm actually going to go like this. I'm going to do this now, so I don't forget. I'm going to go through it all again anyway. That's what they look like. This is the end that's not open. This is closed. So the water comes in here and comes out there, or in here comes out there. Here are the 1 fourth inch end caps we need. You can use these to block watering sites. So this would be to block sites you're not watering with. These, these pop right off. Let me see where I'm at now. Cool. Finally, we need stacks to hold our tubes in place. Or we need stacks. I don't know why I wrote that. Hey, good thing I read this when I've seen that. Finally, we need stakes to hold our tube in place to feed our plants. Drip irrigation kit support stakes, and this is exactly what it is. Pack of 50. I recommend getting a pack of 50 because they're cheap and these are awesome. You can use them for all kinds of things. You can see a little picture here. That's how it holds the 1 4 inch tubing. We're going to push that all the way to the soil. I'll show that in a second. Whew! We got all that out of the way. Seems like a lot of stuff, but it should, co but it should cost you less than $300. Let's put this thing together. Use the 3 4 inch connector that comes with the Echo Plus pump and screw it into the top of the pump. Then connect a 3 4 inch tubing to the pump. Place the pump on the bottom of the drum. Lift the 3 4 inch tubing up and out of the drum. Cut it where it touches the floor. Then attach the 3 4 inch T connector at the end. It should look like this. Hopefully that's self-explanatory. And if it's not, let me know in the comments if this isn't making sense. 
The power cord for the pump will extend outside the top of the drum, which is your reservoir. This will plug into the digital timer. Just, make, just give me a chance to look at everything here. All right, seems easy enough. The smaller pump doesn't need to pump into a timer. It will stay on 24 seven pumping water to keep your reservoir stirred up. This is very important. So you can see here the small stir pump and then cable comes out. Just plug that into your extension cord or whatever you're gonna plug it into. I recommend putting this on a, on a crate or something just cause it's next to a water, water thing. Now we need to cut about four feet in length of the three fourth inch tubing. We need, we need two pieces at four feet. And that's, it just really depends on how big your grower is. Each one will connect to one side of the T-connector. This will give us two lines to run one fourth inch tubing off of in order to make it easier to feed our plants. You can run, or you can run only one line and bypass the T-connector if you have a small area such as a four by four. I use a two line setup for my eight by four area, which looks like this now. So this is the T-connector here. Hope that makes sense, end caps. Boom. <clears throat> Place each 3 4 inch tubing on each side of your 8x4 flood tray. We will, use the, well, we will use the hole puncher to punch 6 holes and each tubing, giving us 12 watering sites. But before that, we need to do the most important thing and put a hold, or put a, should be a hole. Yeah. And put a hole into the 3 4 inch tubing coming off the large pump. You need to do this. If you do not put this hole into the tubing above the water, then your water system will continue to water your plants after the pump shuts off, emptying almost the hole or your whole drum. No good. This is called the hole to release pressure. Be sure this hold, why did I type, keep typing hold? I guess H and the E and D are next to each other. Be sure this hole is facing down because when the large pump turns on, this will shoot water out of it. And hopefully this diagram here makes it make sense. This is the lid, by the way. That's what it says right there. Just set it right on top of your hoses and wires. If you want to get fancy, you can like drill holes and stuff so they, the lid, lid can fully close, but I don't do that. So here's the hole release pressure. It's really important how that holds it. Hopefully that makes sense because that's super important that that hole is there and it's above the water, above the water line. That allows air after after the pump turns off. That allows air to get in there and pull all the water through. Otherwise, it'll just keep siphoning water until your water goes down, down, down to here, like here. The next part will the next part will be from top or from from a top down view. Punch six holes in each two times three by four inch tubing. So hopefully this diagram makes sense. There's the holes. Then use the one fourth inch elbow L connectors, press these into the holes. I forgot to do this. So hope that makes sense. Looks like that. Now they're all into the holes. From the one fourth inch tubing cut 12 three foot long pieces. You can do four if you need four. This is just so you have enough room to get to each of your plants if you want to move them around and stuff. I recommend three to four feet with the 50 foot um, tubing, you have an, you can make four, four 12 foot pieces. So connect each of these three foot long pieces to one of the one fourth inch elbows. Only cap off the sites you'll not be using to water with. So the reason why I recommend just doing 12, 12 at the get go, or if you have a smaller site, um, then, you know, you can only, you, you can use this one tube on the, the four by four. And if you're going to do nine plants and punch in nine holes, um, I recommend though an eight by four to go and already start with, you know, if, it depends on what plants you're going to do. Um, you can, this site, this pump will do more um, than 12 plants, by the way, but you might want to get a bigger pump like the 13 something uh, if you're going to do more, more than 12 plants. But um, yeah, anyway, the end caps are great. So you just cap off the sites you're not going to be using. And then, uh, so also if, if a plant finishes early, it's good to be able to cap it off. And then, yeah, so I recommend going and buying a pack of these or have extra. That way, if you ever run, you have to lose one or something, you have extra. But yeah, it com comes, in, comes in super handy just to cap it off really easily. And then uh, let your other, fl your other plants finish out. Also, I like having, I like having more, more sites than I'm going to ever use. Just because if I ever need to have another plant in there, I have another. If I wanted, what if I wanted to throw some peppers in there? I can just unplug it and 
throw the pepper in there and it's good to go. Now run the lines you'll be using to feed your plants. What? I don't know what that means. I'm not sure why I wrote that like that. Now run the lines you'll be using to feed your plants. Use the stake to place the 1 4 inch tube next to the stalk of your plants. Water your plants or water your plant well before using the drip system to water them so long as your cocoa or so long as the cocoa hmm, so long as I didn't read I didn't read I didn't read this at all yet, sorry. So long as the cocoa in your plants doesn't dry out, then one one fourth inch tubing will water the whole pot. You don't need a drip ring. I don't know what that first line is supposed to say. Let me pause this and think about it. So I think that's the idea, so I change it. Now place the 1 4 inch tubing next to each plant. And here's what it looks like. Hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of a, cut, a side view, cut view. I don't think I have to explain that, hopefully. Hopefully this makes sense by looking at it. And so, um, yeah, you want to put this low toward the plant so it like, holds the tube and like that, and that's the tube, and it clips onto the tube. You just pull all the way down so that you're... The end of the the end of the tip is next to your next to your stem. You don't want it to go right into the stem to have it next to the stem, so it's watering all that rock next to it. And what that does is because this is all saturated, because uh, you don't you don't let it dry out, the water goes in here, displaces some of the other water, and the water goes out, and then it replaces it with new water. I use an eight x four flood tray to place my plants in. I use this to catch all the runoff. I then use a wet vac to vacuum up the runoff water. You can empty it by hand or use a 1200 gallon per hour pump or somewhere around there. With 3 4 inch tubing running outside, place the pump in the vacuum after vacuuming, then turn it on and pump the water outside to feed your lawn or garden plants. This makes life so much easier. And that's it. The next next chapter is asking com frequently frequently asked questions. I need to go through more questions. For some reason I can't think of all the like most fre frequently asked questions. Um, that's I kind of that's kind of how I stopped right there. I need to add more questions. So, but you know, most of the questions are answered in the book. But I just wanted to reiterate some things, even though it's pretty much talked about in the book already, uh, just to answer like some common questions. So it's not going to be a really big chapter. Just thought it'd be kind of cool to have that there. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully that's uh, you can only you know that's the limitation of writing. You can only show so much stuff. You know, with with writing versus video, you can really just show it step by step. So if you want to watch this more step by step. I use a little bit different things. Um, you know, I it's a little more complicated because I had the filter and all that from the previous um, auto pot system, which is unnecessary. You don't need all that. Um, so this this system is much easier to build. So really it looks just like that right there. It's super easy. You just need the two pumps and you want that you want that pump there. Otherwise the water, the nutrients, the heavier nutrients will settle, they'll start to settle at the bottom of the reservoir. And therefore, it's not stayed stirred up, and that's going to fuck your plants up because you're going to get too much nutrients. It's going to be very, very heavy nutrients at the bottom. Like, I think get more PPMs, and then as the water lowers, it'll get less PPMs. You don't want that to burn your plants or something. So, make sure to get the second pump. It's only like $20 uh, for the Echo Plus on Amazon. You might be able to get the one for $14 or $15, the 150 pump. That, that at least will stir a little bit. You can also turn this on its side, by the way. You don't have to have it shooting straight up. You can turn it sideways so it's just pushing the water around like this. I just have to come straight up because it's not strong enough to like blow it out of the thing. Matter of fact, if you just fill this up halfway with water, which is about 25 gallons, it won't actually, it won't, it just, it'll just barely have a little bit of water coming up like this out of the water. And when it lowers down, it only goes up about halfway. The water fountain only goes up about halfway. Um, I don't even put a little, <clears throat> just put the standard the big size. Don't put a small size because that will cause a higher jet, right? The smaller tip you put in that pump, the more stream you're going to get. So you want to just leave it either open, don't put any, don't screw anything on the top of it, or screw the larger one, the largest one it has, like the one inch, whatever on there. That way the hole is nice and big so the water just kind of bubbles out. That's how I, that's how I do it. And it keeps it all stirred up. It's really nice. So really good system. And yeah, they also, they also sell another kind of pump you can buy. And they're actually cheaper. It's a submers submersible. Um, they're submersible pumps, and they're round. They're super powerful, like 25 or 0.25, so one fourth of a horsepower. Super, super powerful pumps. And they need like, but they still. I mean, it, it's a, it's a round, and they sit around the bottom, so it looks like you think it would suck up more water, but they still need like two inches of water to like work really well. But they can get the water all the way down to about half an inch or so. This pump will too, though. Honestly, it'll get it down to about. 
maybe about an inch of water left, maybe even, then you can tilt it and let it pump all the rest of the water out. Um, I like to do that to clean it. So um, I like to tilt my, my drum and then let the pump pump out the rest of the water. Then I'll take a wet vacuum, vacuum with the rest of the water. Then I'll, you know, wipe it all the inside of the, of the drum and clean it out with like some peroxide water or just, you know, 3% peroxide is fine and just clean it all down really good. Um, yeah. And that's pretty much it. And then you go ahead and use your hose and spray, spray all that clean again, and then suck it out with the wet vac one more time then you're good to go. But yeah, so. All right, cool. So I think I covered everything. Hey, if you guys enjoy this channel and you enjoy everything I bring to you, do me a favor and go ahead and join the Patreon. So that's Patreon slash Grow Pot Cheaply. Really cool community. You get access to a lot of really cool different stuff. But I think cool. the coolest thing to do is you get to support everything I do here on YouTube, offering all this free stuff, everyone. And if you just want to help support that whole thing. But also we're, we're a nice community there. So you can share your grows, pictures of your grows there in the community section. So as you can see, once you're an actual patron, you can come here and you can click on like community, for example, and then uh, people are sharing sharing some pictures of their grows and stuff. You can ask questions, I can answer them, all that cool stuff. Plus you get access to all this cool stuff here. So um, here's some of the stuff I talk about right here, all this stuff. And once this reaches $500 a month, um, if you're a Patreon member, then I'm gonna start giving away a light every single month. So we'll start with our Perfect Sun Mini. Every month I'll give away one Mini. And then once it goes up, once that monthly amounts up to like 700, we'll do a Dwarf Star. Once it goes up to like 900 or so, then we'll do the the Max Yield. So that'd be kind of cool. And be, and so every month you're a member, once I get to that, and, and, but we gotta, we need members to get to that to that mark first. And then once we do, as a community, we'll, every, everyone will, every month you're a member, you increase your chance of winning because every month someone's gonna win a uh, free light. So that's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, so anyway, um, also like my past, I, I streamed this. So if you guys were there for the stream, this is cool. Your questions answered on here. Um, for now on, I'm only I'm only having back access to the live question answer videos here as a Patreon member, which is kind of cool. So as this builds up, I'll have all these nice live question answers and uh, on the Patreon page. And then also um, you can ask you can answer questions here, and those questions will be guaranteed to be answered. If you're a Patreon member, you can ask me a question about growing, be guaranteed to be answered. And then uh, uh, dry weight video updates and also like videos like and also smoke reviews. So the dry weight, this is her dry weight video where she actually goes through and talks about everything and tells you the weight she got, gets your excitement, everything. Then also we do um, little updates like this, which is kind of cool. So just more more updates of the grows, like little one minute updates and stuff like that. So you get just more more updates of things I'm doing, pictures and stuff like that. Um, then also you get the uh, smoke reviews, which will be coming. <laughs> She's her face looks right there. She's it caught her right in the middle of talking, so she looks like she's trying to take a shit or something. <laughs> she's like, "Oh my god, that picture sucks. You should change it." And I was like, "Well, that's what it that's what it captured." So, like you see, that. so not not a whole lot here yet. I just started it. So, but yeah, you can join as a Patreon member, just a dollar a month, or if you want to offer, if you want to, you know, give more, you can. And yeah, and then uh, once I do do the, um, it actually shows me how much everyone everyone is donating when I click on members. So once we do the. Um, once we reach that point where we're doing that monthly giveaway, then I'm gonna look at people who has donated more than a dollar. So if they're donated two dollars, their their name will be entered two times. If they don't donated ten dollars, their name will be entered ten times into the random into the random thing. So they have they have a greater chance of winning uh, a free light every month. But yeah, so really cool stuff. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to help out, join it up. Double peace. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Like, subscribe, super important. I want to help this channel grow, help more people. Share the video and share it and share it with all people that you think will benefit from learning how to grow. This exact same system can be used for indoor growing your own vegetables. So you can also share it with people that just want to grow their own tomatoes and stuff like that. It'll, they'll have the biggest, like huge tomatoes indoors. Like, whoa, I should really grow a tomato plant indoors just to show you guys how crazy these lights will blow up a tomato plant. Well, you see what they do with weed, right? Just imagine what they do with tomatoes. It's crazy. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.